So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Um, so yeah, that didn't work so well. <coughs> Hi, I'm Michael, and despite not having a cat, I am going to be talking about The Godfather, which is from Simon. Now, this is Corleone's Empire. There are lots of different Godfather games, and this one, though, is the most recent. In this game, you are each taking on the roles of family members, competing families who are trying to take control when the Don passes. And they'll be doing this by gathering up money, because whoever has the most money can gain the support of the rest of the families. The way you're going to get this money is through a mixture of area control and worker placement and set collection. So this is a lot of different mechanics. I'm really interested in the way these work together, and I think they work really well together. I think this has the potential to be a great game for certain people. I say that because you might have noticed this lone guy down here in the river. That's because he got killed. That's right, you're able to kill people's family members and thugs. And that's using these grey jobs. Now the colour of jobs is where the set collection comes in. So one of the things you can do on your turn, as well as being able to place out your figures on the board, is to complete jobs. When you complete a job, you'll gain the benefit on there, and some of these are grey jobs where you use firearms in order to eliminate your opponents. Which can be very frustrating and very much a setback in the game. So if you don't like that direct confrontation that you're going to have as a result of those jobs, then this is definitely not going to be the game for you. There's also direct conflict in some of the other jobs. You know, you have give me your money, I take your money, stuff like that. So there is very much an element of the interaction being quite nasty and aggressive with those jobs. For the most part, the interaction is simply you beat me to a space that I wanted in a typical worker fas placement fashion. And what I find so interesting about the combination of the worker placement and area control in this is you have different types of placement you have. You have your families that you can place, and you have your thugs who have the... So you've got round base, square base. Thugs only activate a single location, and locations have a front and a back, and they're going to activate the front. And they have equal kind of impact with regards to the area control. They count as one each. But this family member here, who you have fewer of, gives you access to everything it touches. It borders these turfs and will do the back end. So for a lot of things, the back and front are quite similar. In some, though, it can be quite different. And a nice thing with regards to the replay value is that some of these buildings that are going to be put out, either in the setup if you have enough players, or just one each round, are going to be different each game because of the number there are in the game. So, for example, these red ones, which are kind of the best ones, and you're only going to get these in the final two acts. And the game is only made up of four acts, so that's quite a short time. But there are four of these, and you're only going to use two each game. So it gives a nice little bit of variation. And of course, by that point, you've had so much else happen that it will play differently. So the replay value is astounding with this, as is the component quality. That's another area of absolute outstanding. These metal tins, you know, they work fantastically. Are they required, really? You could just have stuff face down. No, but they are lovely and they're just fun to slip your cards in there and be fiddling around with your cards hiding them away from people it's good and the figures are nice okay i i would expect maybe better all the thugs use the same sculpt etc but they're nice the bases are colorful it's all well put together the tokens for marking your area control are good and i've gone off track because I was talking about what I like about the mixture of area control and worker placement. First, you have the two different types of workers, giving the two different types of responses, one more powerful than the other. And then you've got 
the area control. So when you're placing your worker, you've got to consider not just where you want to go for what effect you want to do. And most of the locations will do things like give you money or give you illicit goods that you'll then use in order to complete those jobs. Or the other thing that's very common is allow you to put money in your suitcase. See, things only score if they're in your suitcase. So it's very important to balance that kind of mundane action with doing these more grandiose things of completing jobs and you know going out and getting more jobs and stuff like that. But yeah, so you've got to balance that with the area control. And why is the area control important? Well, probably the most important reason is that it has then a direct impact back on the worker placement. You see, if you control an area, meaning your token is on top because you won the turf war in the previous round, then any thugs using those locations from other players I mean you get the benefit of that location as well which is super powerful if you can get a nice big quantity of the board you're going to get tons of stuff coming in without even having to use your people which is a lovely aspect there is so much going for this game that combination i think is fantastic i think the fact that you have the high replay value is great i think the way the game scales is good but could be better you see at three players you suddenly open up a ton more spaces for family members and that makes the board feel a bit too open compared to playing at two players or four and five players at least in my opinion because two players you have the same amount of space different locations to go to although fewer buildings in those regions but you then also have fewer bordering places whereas then free player you're just adding in one extra player and suddenly you've got a ton more places that you can go which doesn't quite feel tight enough to me it feels like there should have been some that were plus three and some that were plus four if that had been done i think that would make the scaling much better in this game for me now another issue with the scaling on this game is people can get in the lead pretty seriously in the lead especially you know if someone early on takes over tons of territories and so they're getting loads of stuff in, they're doing loads of extra stuff, they're doing all these jobs. If you're playing two player, there's not a lot you can do to really stop that, other than maybe get lucky and get some of these great jobs to wipe people out. But the other person probably already got these great jobs and that's why they control most of the map, because they wiped you out early on and then they took control and they then dominate. So that's where this game kind of falls down for me on the two player. It's very luck heavy with regards to these jobs. Now, everything else I think works fantastically well. The set collection idea on the jobs I think is very good. It's just they're too unbalanced, especially like this green level two one, muscle in one, allows you to act again, which is hugely powerful. And then you've got the gun down ones, which then give you control. And it's all about luck of the draw, really, with regards to get these, or luck of player order to be able to get the ones in the open market. And yeah, so that's where this game kind of falls down. Oh, I'm not too worried about the meanness. There is an element of meanness that means I wouldn't sit and play this with my wife, for example. But that is not as severe as it can be in other games. It's just the odd killing. And if you're playing with a high player count, then that's your catch-up mechanic. That's the balancing factor that it's missing in a two-player game because one person gets in the lead, everyone will pounce and target them. You know, anyone with gun jobs will be hitting them and bring them back down to the same level as everyone else, which keeps the game interesting. And that's why, really, I think this game only works in the way that it should work and is intended to work anyway, for four and five players and when you have five players it can unfortunately run a bit long so that then means you're left with four players because although 
this isn't a difficult game. The options you have are quite simple. There's still a lot of options open with regards to location, and the number of actions you can actually do in a round is quite tight. I mean, you're only going to have, in your first round, for example, two thugs and one family member to place out. So it's very much, oh, I need to utilise these as best as possible. But then there's these ton of spaces that you can potentially go and, you know, someone triggers a car bomb the turn before you and the board state has completely changed. Which can happen because that's the nature of this game. And then you're sat there having to rework out all these different options of what you can do, what you should do, because so much has changed. So, yeah, I think The Godfather Corleone's Empire is a very good game. I think it's very well made, I think there's great rules in there, but I think really it should only be played at four player, and it's not the game for me, but I think there are going to be people who will love this, and I have already heard loads of people saying they do love it. Now, the final thing I do want to mention is just kind of a shame. I think the graphic layout of the board and everything is very well done, but the artwork could have been so much more. The rule book has some astounding artwork in it. I mean, absolutely astounding, fantastic artwork that you would have loved to see on some of these cards. And OK, you've got a bit of it on the ally cards, which is another thing you can do, recruit allies. But then the job cards all have the same image. Every job card, the same image, which is a real shame, a real really boring because that's where your theme is going to come from you know doing the whole uh, I shake down this place I muscle my way in I have a drive-by shooting on someone and you want the artwork to reflect that to make you feel like that is what is happening in the game and it doesn't do that and again with the illicit goods it's just these bland all the same in the decks it's just the one of those areas that this game really falls down and I can't see anyone disagreeing with that point. So that's my thoughts on The Godfather, a game for many people, just not me. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, give a like, a share, subscribe, comment, all of those interactions are great for me and help me to connect with you as a viewer. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching. And bye for now.